Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video we're going to continue with this menu over here. So when you right click and you go to create, we're going to talk about physics material. I talked about all these below already. So check out the separate video or my past videos. We're going to start with physics material. So physics material is a material that you apply and it gives a certain physical property to that object. So I have this box collider on this drawer. I have this rigid body. So the rigid body will make this fall because of gravity and the collider will make this collide onto this cube or this plane or whatever. Let me remove this terrain, I don't need it. Now I'm gonna add this physics material to it and this physics material, it has dynamic friction, static friction, no bounciness, and then it just has friction combined and bounce combined. And I'll talk about that right now. Just wanna show you guys what this material is doing right now. So you can see it falls, it kind of slammed to the ground and that was pretty much it. So let me add bounciness now. Now bounce combine, I'm going to change this. Average, it will get the average of, let's say my plane had a, a physics material and my drawer had a physics material. It will get the average of both of those uh, values and that's what would be applied. If I want the minimum to be applied, that's what would happen. If I want to multiply, so if I want to multiply this bounciness with that bounciness, that's what would happen. And if I want the maximum bounciness, that's what's going to happen. So let's say this floor or plane had zero. This one has one. So it's going to go for the maximum one. So which would be the one. So now let's hit plane. And when it falls, as you can see, it bounces. And it's just going to keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing because it's super bouncy pretty much. Now, static friction is when, when it's pretty much, when it's not moving. So when it's starting to slow down, this will be applied to static friction. And friction, it pretty much adds like a slidiness. So let me go to dynamic friction and I'm gonna set this to one. I'm pretty sure the values are just supposed to be from zero to one, but I can be wrong about that. Okay, let me rotate this cube a bit, just like that, and play. So it lands and it starts sliding. If we go to our scene, you can see it just keeps sliding and sliding and sliding. Now, as it said in the documentation, if this was set to one, it will come to a stop real quick. We'll just set this to one too, just so it's pretty much hard to move once it lands or once it slows down. So now, as you can see, it stopped. Even though it's at an angle still, it still just froze there. Yeah, that's pretty much that for the physics. This also has the same thing if you want to combine them. You can have the minimum, the average, uh, multiply, all that stuff. And then we're gonna go to, so yeah, and then after the physics material, there's signal. Now signal, I wasn't able to figure it out in the previous, in previous videos, but I finally figured it out. So this has to do with the timeline. So when I make a signal, what this signal does, let me go to this empty game object and add this timeline, or what's it called? Playables, playable director. And then we're gonna add a playable asset. So this is pretty much when we go to create, timeline this is what we need so if we go to our empty game object go to game object put the timeline in here now we have our timeline and here's our timeline down here now this oh i gotta actually bring it up here now this signal all we would have to do is bring it up and right here we could change when we want this signal to go off so i'm gonna make this signal go off let's say after three and a half seconds and i'm just gonna add this activation track and put this nice stand in it just so this timeline won't be empty now this little gray line right here is our signal the new signal and we're gonna have something go off so we're gonna go to our game object we're gonna go to add component and we're gonna put signal receiver. So we're gonna add a reaction, and this reaction is gonna come from our new signal, so from this one, and we're gonna add our plus. And this is just like an event, so if you guys have ever missed with events in the animations, so when you go to animation, you can add an event. This is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is an event, you have to have a script on that object to be able to call it. And this one, you don't have to. This one kind of works like a button. So I'm gonna add my cube, which is my floor, my plane. And I'm gonna set this game object to be set active to false. So it will turn off after the three seconds. So now I'll just go into my game and I'll hit play. And I should have made the game view a little bigger, but you will see that the floor should 
disappear after three seconds. So that's pretty much what that signal is. I'll do it one more time with this screen a little bigger. That way you guys can see. I'll hit play. And then it'll fall after three seconds. It just dis So that's what that signal is. And I was going to show you this timeline one, which as you can see, it just creates a little timeline animation. And you could set the frame rate. You could also be based on clips or fixed length. You could change the duration right here, or actually you can't change the duration. This is just to see it. And then you can have a scene preview or not. So when you don't have it, it says when ignoring preview, the timeline window will modify the scene when this timeline is open. So I'll just leave it. Everything as is should be fine. Even the frame rate should be fine. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So in the other videos, I will be covering the rest of these. It's just a long list and each one is a little handful. They have all great uses and you know, and they take the time to explain. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you guys learned something, if you guys are enjoying these videos. And once again, thank you guys.